signing in in between yes sir sure yeah that's great so uh namaste guys uh, uh, a warm uh, welcome to all from uh, my end from hyderabad so hope all of you are doing great especially in this uh, testing times of covid the one thing which uh, covid has done is it has made the world smaller so with all these digital uh, uh, things going on these webinars going on it really has made world smaller so i've been doing so many webinars and all that them getting in touch digitally with a lot of people <clears throat> so that is one thing which has been done but it's still the testing times are going on and hope uh, it uh, gets well is ap so uh, that's what uh, i would say um, so let's go ahead good morning all thank you very much for the malabar branch to invite me to uh, in fact tell that uh, to simplify certain things of daily dentistry so my most of the talks as i said is uh, as uh, i want to say is mostly to simplify daily dentistry because they daily dentistry i feel is complicated so my lectures have mainly focused on how we simplify things day to day things day to day dentistry <coughs> procedures day to day things so because what simplification does it to removes a lot of clutter it removes lot of confusion which is there so most of my lectures are called as let's keep it simple and smart so innovations in effortless dentistry so i mainly focus on a lot of innovations which have come up for doing a uh, effortless dentistry we i don't say that there is not there is no efforts in dentistry there is a lot of effort in dentistry but how we can make it stress free how we can make it simple how we can make it easy is what my lectures and workshops talks about so we all know that uh, dentistry has become fast paced and uh, newer paradigm shifts have been occurring day in and day out for many of us uh, we have been focusing more uh, on giving best of the aesthetics because we do it's, there are two types of dentistry we all do one is want based another is need based want based is when the patient comes up with a lot of problem or pain or anything we do those want based dentistry where patients really wants the treatment is and next is the need based need based is basically on <clears throat> a patient needs like he really wants it to look beautiful or look for replacement of teeth and all that it's not necessary but it is he needs it to make himself look better so most of the focus so we are also called as smile designers so most of our focus is on aesthetics and also aesthetics is provided by a lot of these indirect processes so we have a perception that uh, indirect processes is better and long lasting and is less technique sensitive <clears throat> as they are made in lab we just have to do a preparation we just have to make an impression send it all aesthetic and everything is taken care by the lab by doing layering etc etc whatever they do in their labs they bring out the best aesthetic processes and give it to us and we provide them the aesthetics <clears throat> of course we do plan um, the treatment out and that's the major part we plan the treatment out if it is fmr we <clears throat> plan it accordingly everything but to provide an aesthetic build up <clears throat> we depend on labs so we feel that it's more technique sensitive but here we fail to uh, realize that success of giving a proper and long direct long long lasting indirect restoration depends on a lot of factors and one of the major factors is the cementation of indirect restorations so as there have been a lot of changes that have been going on in um, providing uh, the processes and the type of processes we give because initially we used to uh, it all started with metal then it came, then uh, the especially the you know japanese gold and then came a lot of these uh, non precious metals then came your pfms and then now we see lot of uh, newer all ceramics coming up all ceramics came into the picture and then all ceramics ceramics came into the picture the aesthetics started in proving so 
<clears throat> because we have so many types of processes, we need to understand that it is very much necessary to understand the looting scenario for each substrate because every substrate has a different looting protocols. So we need to understand as there is a change in the substrate and the clinical scenario, there is also a change of type of looting we uh, generally use or generally we give. So <clears throat> it all depends upon that even. And what we have seen is this is one of the most neglected aspect of delivering the indirect processes. That is, <clears throat> which looting cement to be used or whether we need to bond or whether we need to uh, just cement it or loot it. That is one of the confusing aspect of the providing an indirect processes. And why it is neglected? It is all credit goes to GC because it has got uh, you know, uh, it came up with something called as a, a gold label uh, <clears throat> type one or a glass ionomer type one, which was there, which became the mainstay of uh, cementation. And people never thought of anything else. It was so uh, user friendly, so forgiving that we never bothered what 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 are we doing with uh, our preparation? How <clears throat> we were we became a bit careless because we knew that glass ionoma is going to take care. So all credit goes to that. But the thing is today, we need to clear some air about the new looting systems, why these new looting systems were introduced, what are the various protocols, how to go about, how to decide whether I need to use a regular cementation process or I need to use a bonding cementation. So my topic for today is <clears throat> when to cement and when to bond, where we're going to demystify the mystery behind the cementation and bonded looting. <clears throat> I'm sorry, my health is a bit uh, compromised since last three, four days. So, <clears throat> as I said, that we're going to demystify the things. So in order to demystify, so you know, in order to understand when we have to loot and when we have to bond, there are the three, the concept of uh, <clears throat> is when to cement and when to bond depends on knowledge of three C's. The first C is clinical indications. That means <clears throat> we wanna give it an anterior, what type of clinical condition are we going to treat? Are we going to take, are we doing? <clears throat> Whether we are giving an anterior restoration or we are giving a posterior restoration, whether <clears throat> we are just focusing on the strength or uh, strength, we need to give, uh, we need to provide a lot of strength or strong material, especially for the functional uh, aspect, especially in the posterior region, or <clears throat> we are focusing on aesthetics. So what kind of preparation it shall be, uh, depending upon the clinical scenario. This is one of the major <clears throat> aspect of deciding whether to cement or whether to bond. So whether so a clinical indication or a clinical scenario helps us to decide upon bonding and cementation. Second thing is the ceramic. That is either the processes or the material you're going to use. Processes, suppose if you're giving a veneer, if you're giving a inlay or what substrate are you going to use, whether you're going to use a zirconia, whether you're going to use just a PFM, whether you're going to use uh, the, the lithium disilicate. So all this thing, again, decides your when to cement and when to bond. Last but not the least is the cement. So depending upon all these things, we have to decide upon the cement. I will call even the, the adhesive looting uh, uh, materials as cement. So because cement cementation is basically to uh, <clears throat> use a material to create that addition between the processes and the tooth. So we, this is going to decide which cement to use. So these three C's are the main important things. So, so I, I can say the concept behind the knowledge of when to cement and when to bond. So before we go ahead, I'll just go uh, a brief upon what are the ceramics. So first thing, I'm not going to talk about clinical scenario. I'll go to the clinical scenario at the end. First, I'll be talking about the ceramics or the processes which we are going to use and how do we decide upon which 
ceramic which material is to be bonded and which material is to be uh, looted so we have seen <clears throat> that in last uh, many years the processes have undergone a paradigm shift as i was uh, telling in the previous uh, slides even that first we used to give metal crowns then we came up with pfms now the major things are all ceramics so <clears throat> metal and pfms were greatly cemented they can we can we could use the uh, typical uh, or uh, conventional glass hinomers or polycarbox anything to loot metal or pfm crowns they are successful in that but the major issues used to, which started coming which started confusing and which started uh, the failures i can say bonding failures in uh, uh, the indirect processes was because of all ceramics so we are going to mainly focus on all ceramics today so how because there is where we need to decide whether we need to bond or cement so when we are focusing on all ceramics let we go into a brief clinical classification of all ceramics so there is huge classification as per textbooks there are a lot of classifications which have been provided but clinically i'm going to the this uh, the the classification which is more um, focused clinically is this classification which is based upon the amount of silica or the which is depending uh, based upon the presence of silica in the all ceramics so it can be classified into two things one is glass ceramics or a silica based ceramics another is non silica based ceramics or polycrystalline ceramics so in silica based ceramics we generally see this feldspathic ceramics which is traditional which is high in glass content but very low in flexural strength basically the flexural strength is somewhere between 71 to uh, 251 megapascals which is uh, generally seen 71 megapascals is seen in feldspathic feldspathic ceramics is used to layer uh, over the ceramic uh, coping or uh, the <clears throat> metal coping etc so this this is the ceramic which is used it is always seen that feldspathic ceramics needs a base in order to gain a strength so that's the reason uh, a coping is given beneath the uh, feldspathic ceramic over which a layering of feldspathic ceramic is done this is the traditional ones then because the flexural strength was very less so they came up they are very good in uh, because they are all glass based silica based they are very good in aesthetics so then came a reinforced uh, glass ceramics which were used where certain minerals were used to reinforce uh, these uh, ceramics in order to gain a good flexural strength so one for the first one in that was lewisite in the reinforced ceramics like you have empress 1 initial rf etc where 45% of lewisite minerals were added into it where it increased the strength of the material as well as a little bit of uh, aesthetics then came another material which is very uh, common nowadays very famous nowadays and uh, I, i think almost whoever are doing all ceramics are using this that is lithium disilicate reinforced ceramics where they started using uh, lithium disilicate uh, around 60 to 70% and the strength increased but uh, the aesthetics also increased the lithium disilicate has a lesser strength than the lewisite uh, reinforced ones but the strength is comparatively again they are all a uh, very thin restorations they need support so always keep in mind that all the silica based ceramics need a support either as a coping or as a tooth structure for it to gain strength so they need uh, a support uh, behind that then uh, the next one which is commonly used nowadays is the polycrystalline ceramics that is the zirconia so in zirconia zirconia was basically a ceramic oxide without any glassy phase in that so which is basically the form of polycrystalline zirconia which was very dense white so if you see the conventional zirconia they are more whitish they are more dense opaque kind of material but it has got great strength it's got the super strength of more than around 1250 megapascals which <clears throat> is also called as 3white tzp it it is more opaque it's not that much aesthetic but yes it is more opaque 
So a lot of uh, uh, coloring and everything done on to it, but the thing is, it is more opaque. It does not <clears throat> pass much of uh, light also through it. So that was the basic connection of zirconia. So in order to increase the aesthetics of zirconia, what they started adding and stabilizing the zirconia, this uh, tetragonal form of polycrystalline zirconium oxide is very unstable. So in order to stabilize and provide aesthetics, so they started using a material into it called as yttrium. So this yttrium, uh, depending upon the amount of yttrium which is present in the, uh, which is added into the zirconia, that is 40%, 45%, 49%, depending upon that, it, they used to call, they started calling it as 3YTZP, 4YTZP, 5YTZP. Especially this 5YTZP, which is uh, ultra high translucent zir zirconia, what it did was it started having, along with the tetragonal uh, form, it also started having cubic structure, which gave it more aesthetic appearance. So that was about the zirconia. So based on the properties, uh, uh, the zirconia vary. Uh, in uh, based on the properties, the indications vary in zirconia, and based on the cementation, the protocol too varies in this. So, dip, dip, uh, so protocol varies as per the cementation. So, conventionally, as I said, the basic uh, the zirconia is tetragonal, that is three by TZB. Light doesn't get transmitted through it easily, and it is more opaque. But they are in high strength. But need, uh, another thing which is needed in this is it has to be either layered with a feldspathic ceramic or stained, and it is also used as an implant framework. So this needs to be modified. This, need, this needs to be uh, you know layered, etc. Has to be done on the conventional zirconia. Now, if you go to the newer zirconias where the yttrium percent is higher, the they are more translucent. They are more aesthetics but the strength a little bit decreases. So this is about the various ceramics which we use in our day-to-day -day dentistry. So let's see which one has to be cemented and which one has to be bonded. So before going into this, so let's understand why, where you by yourself with this slide will understand where the cementation has to be done and where the looted bonding has to be done. So let's understand. So this Lissy, that is glass ceramics, towards the glass ceramics, whether it is lithium disilicate, lucite reinforced, or feldspathic ceramics, they are more towards aesthetics, and zirconia is more towards strength. So aesthetics and strength are the main things which we generally see, try to achieve with indirect processes. For aesthetics, we use mostly the uh, the, the glass ceramics, and for more strength, what we are doing is we are using mostly the zirconia aspect. So if you see the glass ceramics, they're more aesthetics, they're more highly translucent, but they're less in strength when compared to zirconia. And masking is questionable. Suppose there is a discolored tooth, it cannot mask because it passes the light through it. So it requires, a, requires something to mask that uh, discoloration even. Then it requires adhesive bonding because they are very low in strength. As I said, it requires a support. So it requires, it gains the support from the teeth as well as from the resin looting cement. And they are all single units and the preparations, if you see, they are all non-retentive preparations. So all the glass ceramics, they require adhesive bonding. We'll go to the chemical aspect also, it why they require adhesive bonding. But if you see the, the glass ceramics, they require adhesive bonding. So these glass enomers and uh, the glass enomers are all opaque. So it's so not going to be easy. So these are basically given for aesthetic restoration. So we cannot use any opaque cements. We need to use resin-based cements, adhesive bond in order to give, uh, enhance the aesthetics as well as increase the strength of these processes. Give it in which are being given antidotes even. But again, as I said, <clears throat> they are all 5YZP, the more aesthetic zirconias, which is towards the, the middle, towards the Lissy, you can see that. So they are high uh, opaque or highly opaque. Then we have, uh, they are high in strength. Masking is possible because they're opaque. So here, depending upon whether you're giving a 
of zirconia you're using, which type of preparation you're doing, you can, the cementation as well as bonding has to be choose. Either cementation or either well, bonding. It depends upon what is your main clinical scenario and how is your preparation. That is the clinical scenario totally. So this is the one where we decide. This is the first one where we decide whether to go ahead with either bonding. So what it says is basically, if you go with glass ceramics, if you're talking about aesthetics, adhesive bonding is always majorly important. And if you're talking about strength, if you're going towards the non-silica based uh, things, both cementation and adhesive bonding has to be chosen here where we need to choose what has to be done. Now let's see what are the failures. So what are the various uh, failures which we see in cementation? So what we see is, uh, if you have uh, uh, the various failures which have been seen in cementation is, first one is if there is excessive cementation, if we don't remove the excess, there are chances that there is periodontal infections. Wearing off of the cement, if the uh, cement does not have a good wear resistance, is uh, saliva soluble, etc. So it wears off from the edges and then there, there are chances of micro leakage, which can also cause secondary caries in most of the vital tooth. Then is the failures. There are a lot of things like if you don't choose the proper cement, if you don't choose the proper uh, looting agent, so there will be aesthetic failures. If, uh, uh, yeah, for example, as I said, if you're using a glass enamel for an aesthetic restorations in the anterior with the glass ceramics and all, definitely it's an aesthetic failure. But the most commonly seen uh, failures, which is uh, there nowadays, is debonding. So when I started my practice or when I was doing my uh, uh, graduation and all the major uh, issues which I used to see in um, the failures which I used to see in um, processes was chipping off of the PFMs. So we, I always used to say, I hope you'll uh, um, agree with me. Uh, agree with me on that. Is like. Uh, what are the various, uh, uh, you know, if I used to tell my uh, patients or I used to tell my patients that, okay, if at all it chips off, come back, I'll just uh, uh, replace it, I'll do some corrections, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So, but off late, what I've seen, what we have seen, we, uh, you all will agree with me, I hope so that uh, in last, uh, since the advent of all ceramics, these debondings have become more common. That's the reason uh, the uh, article Gordon Christensen, who's considered to be one of the greatest uh, prosodontists, uh, who has done a lot of lectures, and who has also written books and all that, he uh, tried answering why the crowns are coming off, why these processes are coming off, why these uh, debondings are so common. So the uh, his article speaks on a lot of uh, aspects of why the crowns are coming off, why these debondings are occurring day in and day out, and how to tackle those things. So some of the concepts of uh, which uh, Gordon Christensen has talked about will also I'll also be talking about those concepts in this uh, lecture. So when I went through this article, I got, got a lot of information on why this looting. Initially, when I uh, uh, was seeing these uh, debondings, so this article and this uh, various studies done by uh, Gordon Christensen gave me a lot of insight on what that itself made me realize that there's a difference between a looting and bonding. So these are all cementations, but looting and bonding, there's a difference. That is what I understood and how to go ahead with various processes is what I understood with this article. So in order to understand the looting and bonding, so we need to understand what is the science behind it. The science behind it is basically, let's understand the science behind the cementation or I'll call it as looting and bonding. So they are all driven by interfaces because we know that there are two uh, different aspects. One is the tooth, another is the crown. So we need, they're all different. The, the adhesive bonding and the cohesive bonding, everything. They all depend on the interface here. So the first interface is always between the looting cement and the tooth structure. The second interface is between the looting cement and the indirect processes. It's the looting uh, agent which is going to adhere or which is going to allow the indirect processes to be on the tooth structure for a longer period of time. So we need to understand these interfaces, how these interfaces work. So if you see conventional cementation, now what, what is conventional looting? 
looting is basically to seal the gap between the truth and restoration so it is it is not going to uh, give you the give, uh, give you the strength to the uh, processes neither it's going to give you a strength to the processes or nor the retention it is just going to provide an adhesion that's it it is not going to help you in retention or anything because you need to have a retentive preparation in order to hold a, a crown or a bridge or a processes whatever so you require a retentive preparation for that when you're looting for with a cement or a with a, a regular looting uh, agents so it does not provide retention retention depends upon the various factors here it is just going to seal the gap between the tooth and restoration it's going to just bond it together that's it it's not going to provide the strength to the uh, the processes the, what are the interfaces which play a role in uh, conventional cementation the main interfaces is one is looting cement and the two structure where the gic or the rm gic is going to have a great bonding to the tooth structure similar to how it bonds the regular glass enamel bonds then it has got a macro mechanical addition or a possible chemical macro mechanical addition with the processes even so this is the interface generally which is seen so there is no requirement of any surface pre treatments etc for any kind of this metal pfm except uh, or the conventional uh, conventional zirconia in terms of when you are doing a conventional cementation so it is just two interfaces one is a chemical addition to the tooth structure chemical and micro mechanical addition to the tooth structure another one is the chemical addition to the uh, <clears throat> uh what, what what i call it as to the processes so that is about the conventional cementation so when you go to bonding now bonding what it does it aids in adhesion even because of the interfaces because of the uh, bonding or adhesion which it causes with the tooth structure as well as with the uh, process it it aids in adhesion that means it also aids in strengthening the restoration either this uh, adhesion is basically due to either chemical adhesion or micro mechanical adhesion so it provides a stronger bond between the tooth and the processes so it's going to hold the processes nicely also it provides aesthetics it provides a lot of strength to the processes so what are the interfaces which play a role in the adhesive cementation the first thing the interface towards the tooth it is micro mechanical bond because we are going to etch and then bond and then this resin looting cement is going to uh, bond to the tooth structure so it is more about of more amount of micro mechanical bonding so when you go towards the process it, it is either micro mechanical and chemical bonding because we are going to do a surface pre treatment apply uh, a primer and then the looting agent is going to come so it is either a micro mechanical chemical bonding or it's just a chemical bond so this is the difference this is the basic uh, science behind the bonding and looting so if you understand what are the major things in bonding and looting what are the major uh, you can say properties of bonding and looting so if you see conventional cementation it is low in low in uh, technique sensitivity so that means if you are doing a regular cementation with uh, uh, the glass and mosaic rm gic you don't have to worry the, the technique because it's moisture friendly it's user friendly it's most forgiving so there is no technique sensitivity you just have to dry the surface place the glass enema and just you know, keep it bond strength is also low but because of the retentive factors so lot of uh, time we say we be uh, confuse ourselves that oh when i used to give pfms you know uh, it was very difficult for me to take it out yes it was very difficult for us to take it out to, for uh, if at all any failure occurs the bonds that is all depends upon the retentive preparation we used to do that is also major factor here why the the uh, the um, the crown of bridges never used to come out second thing when we used to take it out also you will not see the cement on the crown aspect the cement is all uh, used to be on the tooth aspect that means the bonding towards the tooth surface of the glass and was a good but bonding towards the tooth uh, the processes was not that great so it all depends upon various retentive factors so the bond strength was not that great so but on the contrary if you see 
the adhesive cementation that is your bonding it is very high technique sensitive because we need to have a, a you know isolation etc bond strength is excellent you need a lot of moisture control which was not required with conventional cementation and if you see the mechanical properties mechanical properties of adhesive cementations are much better when compared to conventional cementations yes so we need to understand again the mechanical properties can be much better if you use a proper protocol so that protocol we are going to talk about today also so let's uh, see a brief about the ceramics and uh, cementation methods so when to cement cementation is typically for allowing the mechanical retention so if there is a retentive preparation when isolation is not possible when moderate aesthetics is required when patients with special needs are there you are going to use a cement you are going to use, you are going to loot your processes that is your uh, by using a glass enema like fuji 1 or a gold label 1 uh, or a resin modified glass enema like fuji plus or fuji sem so but in terms of bonding bonding is done when the preparation is non retentive i'll, I'll uh, to uh, let you know what retentive and non retentive preparations are if the preparation is not retentive like for example inlays your veneers etc where the preparation is non retentive you are going to choose a bonding where isolation is possible you are going to choose bonding where high aesthetics is required you are going to choose bonding so there are two options one is a self adhesive resin cement another is an adhesive resin cement <laughs> so <clears throat> as i said I'll, so, what is retentive preparation and what is non-retentive preparations? Now, non-retentive preparations generally uh, uh, require bonded looting. So, you always think if your preparation is non-retentive, if your processes, which is is a passive fit processes, uh, is very passive fit processes, choose bonding. So. that means your preparation is non retentive when there is a short clinical crown that is lesser than 3 mm and there is a taper of more than 5 degrees it's a non retentive preparation so that and also this is about the uh, 360 degrees preparation even if there is partial preparation like on lays in lays veneers table tops endo crowns etc these are all partial preparations there it is all passive fit so there also you are supposed to there are all non retentive preparations they are supposed to use bonded looting so this is about the preparations so let's come to the clinical indications so clinical indications here basically as i said i'll be talking about the next c that is the clinical indications so clinical indications depends upon three things what is the type of processes you are going to give what are your aesthetic requirements and what is the substrate you are going to use so these three questions are going to allow you to uh, understand whether i should cement or whether i should bond so if you see the processes if they are partial processes like when veneers inlays onlays endocrons table tops all these things they are partially covered they are less retentive they are low in strength so the golden rule when there is less retention and when there is low in strength processes it's always better to use a bonded looting and third criteria is high on aesthetics so less retentive low in strength high on aesthetics always use a adhesive cementation or a bonded looting uh, cementation bonded looting or a bonded cementation because these are the main three criteria because less retention all these processes if you see inlays if you see onlays if you see veneer they are all very thin they require the support of the tooth structure even they also require the support of a good bonding or a good looting cement in order to have a proper retentive positioning or proper strength to it uh, to uh, it on the contrary when you come to the full crowns the full crowns are basically 360 degree covered crowns that is the whole crowns so uh, crowns or bridges so here the retention and resistance form is there so it has got a good retention if you have a good retention and resistance forms if uh, the aesthetics is not of much concern you it's a, it's of a moderate concern and if the materials which you are using are zirconia or even glass glass ceramics you can go ahead for glass ceramics of course as a cementation if the materials you are using is zirconia go with 
conventional cementation or you can also use a adhesive cementation again depending upon the retentive preparation you have retentive or non retentive preparation zirconia can be either cemented or it can be uh, bonded looted so this is about the type of processes if you are using then if you go to the aesthetic requirement if you are looking for aesthetics forget everything it is only adhesive cementation nothing other than that then depending upon what substrate using using if you are using a glass ceramic nothing other than adhesive cementation will work so adhesive cementation is the one which is going to be used for glass ceramics then uh, you cannot use a conventional cementation of uh, uh, the, the the glass anomers etc because they will not form a bond with the tooth structure here so then if you are using a zirconia use either conventional and adhesive again depends upon the factors a lot of factors that is retentive factors and all that factors here so this these are the clinical indication these are the three questions these are the three uh, scenarios where you are going to you uh, if you understand that you will understand so less retentive high on aesthetics low in strength adhesive cementation if it is full uh, 360 degree ground whether it will be metal or pfm or anything you can uh, or zirconia retentive preparation you can go ahead with cementation the conventional cementation or adhesive cementation if it is all ceramics so what are the various options available for your cement and bond so the options available for cementation that is your looting is you have glass enamel looting an rmgic looting what all you can loot with that is <clears throat> non precious metal processes metallic uh, metal ceramic processes zirconia with retentive preparation so all these processes you can cement if you're looking into bonding you have two options one is self adhesive resin another is adhesive resin so in uh, glass ceramics so if you see glass ceramics, so what are the processes you can loot uh, bond uh, bonded loot is glass ceramics that is lithium disilicate felspathic ceramics and lucite reinforced ceramics and zirconia with non retentive preparation so these these helps us to understand which needs to be bonded and which needs to be cemented again the criteria depends upon the various factors which, which i said depending upon the retention aesthetics and the strength what are the various uh, cementation conventional cements which are available they are zinc phosphate it used to be the first uh, looting cement as uh, uh, we had read that uh, it and it is still being used in a lot of implant looting so zinc phosphate is being still used in implant looting then we have zinc, zinc for polycarboxylate which used to be previously used for uh, as a conventional cement but when the glass enamel cements came there is fuji 1 and gold label 1 it totally replaced all these things still the, a lot of people prefer zinc phosphate for uh, looting over the implants then you have uh, resin modified glass enamels like uh, fuji sem so where do these glass ionomers or a fuji one or a gold label one uh, can fit in in these clinical scenarios as uh, uh, as we discussed in the three c's if the prosthesis is full crown and bridges if the <coughs> if the substrate is metal or pfms and occasionally zirconia clinical scenario retentive preparation and moisture friendly a lot of moisture control is not happening you can use glass enamels so all these conditions all these scenarios you can go ahead with blindly go ahead with glass enamels because it is very forgiving and very good so it is widely used clinically proven we all know that it's got a good bond strength here to the shoe structure when a retentive preparation is there so when you go to fuji sem or a resin modified glass enamels again the process is where you are going to use this is full crown and bridges the substrates which you can use this is metal pfms and conventional zirconia as i was talking about the conventional zirconia which can be used as a coping uh, which is uh, basically uh, used as a coping or a regular crown also then clinical scenario retentive preparation moisture friendliness is required the usp of this is it has got both micro mechanical adhesion in terms of resin as well as chemical adhesion in terms of glass enamel so low film thickness a fluoride release and better wear resistance is there with this so you can use in metal pfms as well as in conventional zirconias 
right? So let's, this was about the conventional cementation. So let's talk about the confusing aspect, the major confusing aspect, which is resin cements where a proper protocol is required. For conventional cementation, you don't require any great protocols. What you need to do is damp dry your uh, tooth uh, before cementation, because you're using glass enamel or RMGIC, you don't, you should never dry desiccate your tooth, damp dry. If you want to use a conditioner, you can use a conditioner. Then, uh, just dry and clean up your uh, PFM or zirconia. Use a glass enema, mix the glass enema, place it and place it onto the tooth and it will become, uh, it will uh, uh, get bonded. That's it. That's a simple protocol we all know for the uh, conventional cementation. But the major protocol differences come in resin cements. So depending upon the various processes we are going to use, depending upon the various substrate we are going to use, basically, there is there are different uh, protocols which needs to be understood, which has made the debondings more common with resin cements. So let's understand what these resin cements and the protocols are. So if you see resin cements, clinically can be classified as self-adhesives, adhesive resin cements, and an aesthetic adhesive resin cements. So aesthetic adhesive resin cements are basically used for the veneers and all aesthetic purpose. Adhesive resin cements are used for a little bit of aesthetics, but also for a lot of other uh, processes like metal also for your, uh, your pores, for your uh, uh, endocrowns, for tabletops, for onlays, etc. So the, the posterior onlays there and all, where aesthetics is not a great thing, but aesthetics is required, but you can use adhesive resins in, uh, resins in uh, that way. So if you see the bond strength, for self-adhesives, the bond strength is low to medium. And for adhesive resins and aesthetic adhesive resins, the bond strengths are better. Now, the major problem here with all adhesive resins, all resin cements, is it takes a little bit of time to achieve the bond strength. It is not like glass enomas that it goes and chemically bonds and achieves a great bond strength. It takes a little bit of time for it to achieve a bond strength towards the intaglio surface of the processes as well as towards the root surface. So that is the major reason why bonding failures occurs. So if you see an article which was there in a survey basically, which was done in Dental Advisor in May 2016, it was seen that there is a dip in the use of self-adhesive resins because it took, it takes a lot of time to uh, achieve the bond strength. It takes a lot of time. It takes almost half an hour to one hour to achieve a good bond strength. So we can't make the patient sit for a longer period of time. And there was increase in the use of adhesive resin cement, which used to give a, a faster bond strength and a much better bond strength. So that was seen. So self-adhesive resin cement went on uh, a bit low. But again, I said everything depends upon the preparation even. So now let's understand the major uh, the the, the uh, mystery or major thing with the protocol which really uh, confuses a lot of us because when uh, I did my first uh, all ceramic uh, processes, it was basically a pressable ceramic of lithium disilicate, a glass ceramic, as well as a lucid Empress one that is lucid reinforced glass ceramic, uh, glass ceramic. So at that time, zirconias were not there. So the protocol which was given at that time was the protocol for all ceramics. So slow and steady, the zirconias came into picture. And what I we saw, even I did that mistake, is I used the same protocol for zirconia even. So where I started seeing the problems occurring. So we need to understand what these protocols are, where to use these protocols and how to use protocols and what are the things we should keep in mind clinically when we are doing a bonded loot, bonded looting. So there are, the protocol has four steps. The resin uh, looting protocols have four steps. First one, the, the, that, that means there are two surfaces, right? Well, as I said, there are two interfaces. One interface is the intaglio surface of the processes. Second interface is the tooth. So we need to do the treatment of both. So first uh, two uh, steps are for the processes. So you need to surface pre-treat a processes, whether 
let it be a glass ceramic, let it be a zirconia. You need to surface pre-treat that. So we, how do we do it? We'll uh, see it in the further slides. Then after we surface pre-treat, we need to apply a primer onto it so that the resin looting cement uh, pre, uh, get, uh, bonds with that uh, primer, similar to how it bonds with the bonding agent and the tooth structure in the uh, onto the tooth structure. So on the tooth aspect, you need to do etching and bonding because it's a resin, it's a composite. So we need to have those uh, bonding protocols. Either you can go ahead with a total edge technique or a self edge technique or a selective edge technique. The best technique nowadays, because the most of the things which we are doing is um, on the vital tooth, especially these uh, aesthetic ones. So we need to understand that uh, we uh, sell uh, the selective edge technique helps us. I'll let you know what selective edge technique. And the last step is looting. So loot the processes and just place it onto the tooth and light cure it. So this is the base, basic protocol. So let's understand what are the what is the difference in surface pretreatments in various processes, various substrates. What is the difference of priming in various processes? Bond and bonding is the same for the tooth structure. So in order to understand, we should understand what is the interface each type of uh, these ceramics will form with the resin looting cement. In this, in adhesive cementation. If you're using a glass ceramics, whether it is Empress One or uh, initial uh, uh, LRF or initial LIC, that is lithium disilicate or Emax or anything, the glass ceramics, was, uh, the, what uh, the, the, uh, we need to use. So the towards the tooth structure, it's micromechanical bonding, that is your etching and bonding. We need to etch the tooth and bond the tooth. On the other aspect, that is the intaglio surface of the tooth, first you need to etch the surface, the glass ceramics needs to be etched and it has to be etched with hydrofluoric acid. So it needs to be etched with hydrofluoric acid, then you apply a primer, then you apply a bonding agent. So eighth generation bonding agent or a, uh, also a silane is more than enough. If, it, if you have a silane, it's more than enough. So you just apply that, no need to cure, let it dry. Then use a resin looting cement. So towards the intaglio surface, you are supposed to uh, etch and use a silane. So silane coupling agent for the bonding. So the, in silane coupling agent, there are two groups. One is a vinyl group and another one is the silana group. The vinyl group is going to uh, bond with the glass ceramics and silana group is going to bond with the resin looting cements. And these two is going to give you a proper addition. So this is how the glass ceramics have to be surface treated and primed. When you go to, uh, the zirconia, the zirconia, you know, uh, because it's a non-glass, it's a non-silica based ceramic, or you can, it's, it does not have any glassy phase or anything. So they cannot be etched with hydrofluoric acid or any other acid. They need to be, they need to be sand blasted. And you cannot use a silane because silane is basically for glass ceramics. So what you need to use here is an MDP primer. Uh, zirconia primer. So you need to use a zirconia primer, which is going to have a chemical bond with resin looting cement. Towards the tooth structure, it's the same thing, micromechanical bond. Now, what happens? So if you see a gist of what needs to be done as a surface pretreatment protocol, the silica-based glass ceramics, they need to be etched. The intaglio surface needs to be etched for, with hydrofluoric acid for 20 seconds, and then apply a silane coupling agent where in case of zirconia, if you're using a resin looting cement, if you're doing an adhesive bonding, you need to sandblast with, uh, uh, with uh, it comes, generally it comes sandblasted. Now I've written something called a street with Ivo clean. Now what happens with this is when the zirconia comes sandblasted to the clinic, we first do a try-in. When we do a try-in, what happens is the phospholipids which are there in the saliva go into the <clears throat> these processes and starts blocking the sandblasted surface of the <clears throat> Zirconia. A lot of them, they used to say, I uh, can we, they ask, can we use a phosphoric acid edge? 
in order to remove phosphoric acid phospholipids again is the same thing hydrofluoric acid no you cannot use hydrofluoric acid it will not remove if you any acid treatment will not remove these phospholipids from the uh, zirconia either it has to be re sandblasted if you have a chair side sandblaster that's great or you can treat it with an ivocla product called as ivoclean because it's which is a zirconia abundance uh, uh, solution you just apply that and clean it off it removes the phospholipids or the easiest procedure is you have a zirconia primer apply a zirconia primer uh, to the intaglio surface of your uh, <clears throat> zirconia then do a try in the phospholipids are not going to do anything are not going to hamper anything so then take it off clean that mdp primer clean that zirconia primer your uh, uh, sandblasted surface is back so that is the simplest rather than uh, put uh, uh, investing in one more product so the same zirconia primer can be used for uh, uh, during the try in so that can be done then uh, after the surface treatment is uh, done you apply a mdp primer if it is retentive sorry uh, there is a mistake here so if the prep is retentive you need to apply non retentive you need to apply a mdp primer and if you are using an adhesive luting you need to apply an mdp primer if you are doing a conventional uh, cementation with a conventional zirconia you need not uh, do all these steps so this is a pre treatment guide if you require uh, this guide you can ask uh, gc associates they can provide it to you uh, this allows you to understand what needs to be done in each step where what kind of substrate it is what is the pre treatment at the lab or the chair side you need to do what are the steps to be followed and how you need to lute so you can see lithium disilicate what needs to be done for zirconia what needs to be done or metal uh, uh, composite metal composite or hybrid ceramics what needs to be done for fibers uh, post what needs to be done so if you see the whole scenario of cementation and bonded uh, uh, looting the especially the bonded looting or the adhesive cementation of uh, the restoration depends on the looting systems looting cements and the adhesive uh, systems the clinical success of these indirect restoration depends on three factors one a proper degree of polymerization because all of the uh, cementation needs to be properly polymerized so if <clears throat> they are properly polymerized there will be no issues then a proper pre treatment of intaglio surface of the processes totally depends on that that is a, in fact that is the first step towards the success of your uh, indirect restoration so that is a proper pre treatment of the intaglio surface and then proper treatment of dentinal surface now i was talking about selective uh, um, uh, selective edge technique selective edge technique is basically wherever there is enamel you just apply the uh, the etchant only the enamel surface you apply the etchant for 10 seconds wash it off and then apply a self edge bonding agent on both the enamel and dentin you're not going to etch the dentin here you're just going to etch the uh, enamel for 10 seconds wash it off and then apply a self edge bonding agent both on the enamel and the dentin because self edge is going to etch the enamel for furthermore 10 seconds and dentin for 10 seconds because dentin is not supposed to be etched more than 10 to 15 seconds if you etch it more than that you will uh, you will ha always have a chance of uh, having a post op sensitivity so you just apply this self edge bonding agent Uh, harsh dead of hair remove the uh, the the top layers of uh, the uh, th which are which are there the monomer etc the then uh, cure it that's it so this is what is selective edge technique which uh, you can do then that is uh, these are the three factors which are on which the clinical success is dependent right so if you see the armamentarium for bonded looting what do you require for surface pre treatment you definitely require an hydrofluoric acid edge you require sandblaster or ivo clean so if at all sandblast it comes sandblasted <clears throat> if you follow the technique which i told it's more than enough so you don't require ivo clean or a sandblaster for that for zirconia yes you require for priming you require a silane coupling agent you require mdp or a zirconia primer this mdp primer is also a non precious metal primer so if you are looting a non precious metal also if you are planning to adhesively bond a non precious primer <clears throat> uh, 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 crown there also you can use a metal primer 
then you require a precious metal primer suppose you want to loot it over a, 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 a titanium implant so you need a precious metal primer over it so uh, rather than etching and bonding you just need a precious metal primer which has to be which is basically a mdtp primer also um, the, we have seen lot of uh, uh, people go for uh, precious gold uh, crowns uh, uh, in hyderabad there are a lot of them who go for precious gold crowns so in precious gold crowns you again require a precious metal primer that is your uh, metal uh, that is your mdp uh, mdtp primer so if you want to give a good uh, uh, addition then you require a bonding agent and an etchant then you require in looting cement you require either a self adhesive resin cement or an aesthetic resin cement or an adhesive resin cement so there are a lot of things which are there so there are too many confusing so let's uh, simplify this also with one of the products here so what are the options available in the market for uh, the adhesive and self adhesive resin cements so where all this self adhesive resin cements will work so self adhesive resin cements prosthesis full crowns and bridges inlays onlays and posts all the things you can go ahead and use self adhesive resin cements again depends upon the substrate again substrate it's zirconia glass ceramics and hybrid ceramics so you can use gcm linkes or gcm caps for all these things clinical scenario again non retentive usp is excellent wear resistance no refrigeration is required for all the the gcm linkes etc and faster bond strength so that's the advantage of gcm linkes so <clears throat> again here the surface pre treatment even with the self adhesive resin cements the surface pre treatment of the prosthesis is is must it it always aids in a better retention a better retention of your crowns and bridges so please do the surface pre treatment generally what everybody thinks is self adhesive resin cement fine so there's no need of uh, uh, surface pre treatment but yes surface pre treatment is a mainstay for any kind of resin looting cement let, let it be self adhesive or an adhesive resin cement then coming to the adhesive resin cements now i told you there are in the market there are adhesive resin cements and aesthetic adhesive resin cement separately available so there is one product which is gcm link force which is both an aesthetic as well as an adhesive resin cement one in all so you don't have to uh, go in with a separate adhesive resin cement and a separate aesthetic adhesive resin cement for veneers etc so this gcm link force can be used for both uh, as an adhesive as well as aesthetic resin so what are the processes that is <clears throat> that can be looted you can see it's wide partial processes full crowns 360 degree crowns everything you name it every processes can be uh, bonded looted with gcm link force substrates all the substrates let it be zirconia glass ceramics hybrid ceramics metals anything fiber post everything everything can be looted with gcm link force clinical scenario non retentive preparation where aesthetic is of prime concern you can go ahead with uh, this <clears throat> the best usp of this product is it is one solution for all scenarios it decreases your inventory because it has got a primer called as g multi primer which is a combination of silane zirconia primer and a non precious metal primer that is mdp primer mdtp so everything in a single bottle so you don't have to have a separate uh, silane or separate zirconia primer nothing you just have one primer for everything for all type of processes then it has got an eighth generation bonding agent which is having around 3 microns of film thickness and which is very useful when you are looting a veneer because the thickness of uh, the film thickness of your uh, uh, bonding agent also uh, is very much important when you are looting uh, in lay or uh, veneer so it has got only 3 microns of film thickness plus it's got a high bond strength of around 48 megapascal 42 megapascal so that is there inside this and of course the adhesive resin cement which is an aesthetic resin cement and which does not have these tertiary amines which causes generally the discoloration in veneers in due course so it does not cause any discoloration in the veneer so your veneers are long lasting so all these things is included in gcm link force so <clears throat> gc provides all the smart solutions so from uh, a free original free temporary cement to the other same resin cement so it has got everything so what are the various takeaways of this uh, 
uh, today's uh, session is basically what you need to understand is when to cement and when to bond. What are the things that needs to be kept in mind is we all know conventional cementation is the mainstay. It can never go off. So the glass inomers or RMGIC can never go off. They are always going to be the mainstay because around 60 to 70% of, of Indian dental practice, <clears throat> the general Indian dental practice, even I can say up to 80% is basically this PFMs and crown, or PFMs and metals. So this conventional cementation can never go off from our practice. When there is high glass content, when there is partial coverage, when there is high aesthetics, go in with adhesive cementation. When there is high crystalline content, full coverage, high strength, if it is now there, the <clears throat> preparation comes into picture. If it is retentive prep, go with conventional cementation. If it is non-retentive prep, you can go ahead with adhesive cementation. Adhesive cementation, surface pretreatment is the main key. If you don't do surface pretreatment, there'll always be failures. There'll definitely be failures. Last but not the least, is when in doubt, if you are having a doubt that this is going to come off or it's going to have an issue of debondings, always go with adhesive cementation because if you follow a proper protocol with adhesive cementation, you'll have a long lasting retentive rep, uh, restoration. So nothing to worry about, about the <clears throat> debondings, etc. So when in doubt, always go ahead with adhesive cementation. So that's it for today. That's it. Uh, thank you very much for the session. The session I'll open up for the <clears throat> questions. Hope uh, you got an idea on how to go ahead with how it cleared a lot of air between when to cement and when to bond and what to use when you're uh, uh, doing uh, cementation. So. Wow, sir, that was a, a beautiful presentation. A lot of uh, fact knowledge. Uh, sir, we have a few doubts. Yeah. So, so one doctor has asked, how do we clean the MDP primer from the entire geode surface? Do we have to clean it, remove it? Yes, or we need to. So, uh, so uh, how do we have to clean the MDP primer? So when you're helping how do you the regular cleaning uh, three way wash it off take cotton clean it off that's it and dry it so you can do that so uh, nothing special is required to clean the mdp primer okay so can you repeat that i think we lost a, a bit of your words yeah some so, uh, <clears throat> see mdp primer when you're using it as uh, uh, during the dry in after that you can just wash it off they first of all, take a cotton, dip it in water, clean the surface. So it gets cleaned off. Or you can also use a three-way syringe. But because nowadays uh, we are not preferring these aerosol procedures and all aerosol things. So what you can do is just dip some cotton uh, in wa water, clean it off, and then dry it. That's it. Then apply the MDP primer fresh for looting. Uh, so another doctor has asked the difference between self-adhesive and self-etch adhesive. Hello, sir. Uh, different adhesive. Now, self-adhesive. If you're asking me, cement, self-adhesive cement is the uh, self-adhesive cement. Am I audible? Uh, no, sir. We, we, I think there was some con, uh, connection issues. Uh, uh, give, give me a second. I'll just, uh, just give me a second. Uh, Definitely, sir. Yes, I'll refresh my... Now it's okay? Now it's Am I better. audible now? Yes, sir. Yeah. So self adhesive and self edge adhesive. Now self adhesive cement is a cement which where you don't require etching and bonding onto the tooth surface. That step is not required. Now self edge adhesive is a self edge adhesive bonding agent, which is okay. like the 
bonding agents which we have uh, premium, like GP, premium. Yeah. Uh, all the second generation and peak generation bonding agents so that is self adjusted Yes, sir. So, uh, one question, sir, I have from my side. In all the uh, YouTube and Availi and all those photos that the doctors put, we have seen people sandblast the enamel surface, not sandblast, at least, to remove the biofilms, profi. Yeah. Uh, is that necessary? Uh, does it ensure better? And how do you distinguish that biofilms? See, when we are doing, uh, first of all, uh, again, and there are two types of practices. One, if we are giving a, uh, if we are giving a crown, uh, a temporary crown, right? If you are giving a temporary crown, you need to clean up the surface. Right after removing the temporary crown, if you're giving a, a permanent crown, uh, when you're giving a long-lasting crown, so you need to remove the uh, surface, the, the clean the surface uh, with the uh, eugenol free cement, whatever is sticking over it. So for that, you can just uh, do a profi face. Yes, of course, there are a lot of people. They say that we can remove if they are not giving any uh, uh, temporary crowns. There is biofilms that is there. Of course, because these biofilms are going to, but when you're etching, when you're doing an adhesive, cement, uh, adhesive cementation, you're anyhow going to do a etching, okay. right? right? So that etchant is going to clear off the, these biofilms, et cetera. So nothing to worry about. But if you're doing a regular uh, cementation, Right with glass enamel or RMGIC, of course, you need to remove those five columns. That's the reason I said so a lot of them they prefer using a conditioner <clears throat> prior to GIC cementation or RMGIC cementation. So, if you see a lot of uh, uh, international articles, also they also say a lot of them, a lot of uh, prosthodontists also say that use a conditioner before uh, looting with a glass enamel or a RMGIC. That is to remove the smear layer or the biofilms, etc. So that helps in remove. You can also do a profi paste. There's no issues on that. You can use a profi paste to remove uh, all that. But if you're doing, if you're also using a dentine conditioner, it's, it works out the same way. Okay. Right. So I think uh, there are some questions in the chat box. Yes, sir. Can you see them, sir? Yeah. yeah, so can I take up those questions? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Uh, Dr. Jagdish asks me for thinner we loot or bond. Uh, uh, he means, I think, uh, for thinner uh, uh, processes we loot or bond. For thin processes, it's always better to bond. Uh, can you play the slide 40 again? Okay. Slide 40. So you want me to play the slide 40? Uh, just a sec. So this is the slide 40. So these are the various uh, cements which uh, GC has. I think it's about that. Right. Then uh, somebody asked me, can we see the protocol you put up before cementation? Uh, Cementation again, uh, Dr. Maria. Can you just specify me cementation? Uh, I didn't understand. Like uh, you are talking about uh, the uh, uh, bond uh, adhesive cementation, the protocol. I just put up that. So. So let me share this slide again. Adhesive cementation. This is basically silica the taglio surface with hydrofluoric acid for 20 seconds, apply silane coupling agent, then go ahead with bonding, uh, etching and bonding of the tooth surface, use adhesive cement, and then loot it. Then uh, go and then light cure it after putting the light cure uh, thing. Light cure it for two seconds, remove the excess that is the light cure it for that is tack cure it, 
remove the excess because if you light cure it for longer period of time, it will be very difficult to remove the resin looting cement, excess resin looting cement. So first attack cure it, remove the, it to go. The resin looting cement will go into a rubbery stage. Just clean it off with a probe or anything. Just take it off. It will just peel it off. It can peel off. And then you can also use a floss before light curing. If you're using a looting a, a veneer, can use a, a floss to clean it up because if you're using if you do it do the flossing after uh, the um, curing there are chances that you dislodge it so clean it up with the floss or you can also use a, 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 a strips for clean cleaning up of all those things so that can be done for zirconia you either it comes as sandblasted and you can, uh, as I, I told you, the protocol, what needs to be done. So dentine bonding agents and enamel bonding agents. Oh, enamel bonding agents is too uh, old. Well, bonding agents started as enamel bonding agents. Nowadays, it's all dentine bonding agents, which also have a good uh, bond strength to the enamel because of the presence of especially uh, these, uh, because of the presence of MDTP in nowadays a advanced age generation bonding agent, you have a good uh, bonding to the enamel even. So one question, sir. If, uh, suppose I want to do a conservative preparation, that is a not retentive preparation, and uh, the patient is not willing to pay for the uh, ceramic cost, and and um, I tell the patient, okay, we will do the same thing in uh, metal. Okay. What cementation protocol would you suggest for metal? Non-retentive preparation, like uh, uh, conservative or non-retentive. So, Hello? Yeah, suppose it's a posterior tooth, we are going to give an overlay. Uh, see, overlay and uh, non-retentive. Metal overlay. Yeah, you need to go ahead with bonded loop. Yes, bonded. So, uh, you know, any special MDP metal for, primers? No, so go with RMGA. RMGA is the regular customers will have a very. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, right. The regular class animals, the film thickness is going to be more. But if, when you see RMGIC, the film thickness is three microns, especially the Fujisam and all, it's just three microns. So, you can go ahead with RMGIC there. Because aesthetics is not a main concern. Right, aesthetics is not a main concern. It is not a main concern. So you can go ahead because the bond strength with uh, the RMGIC is much better when you're uh, doing an on, uh, overlay with uh, uh, the metal or a PFM. Also, see, you can choose adhesive bond. Bond more. Think, oh, so we lost you. Again, as I said, when you are in doubt, choose adhesive bonding. When you doubt that it might go off, the RMGIC for an overlay, it works fine because of the low film thickness. Yeah, Sir, hello, we lost you. RMGIC is a bit. Uh, said uh, able to no sir you're breaking up we are just getting bits and pieces you able to hear me uh, no sir no. we are getting only yeah. bits and pieces yeah, now now I'm able to hear me yes sir. Uh, yeah. so yeah yeah uh, so basically what happens is, as you said, in uh, resin modified glass enamels like Fujisam, which has got least film thickness, works out for these metal on lays or PFM on lays. But the thing is, it, it is your decision. If you think, as I said, the last statement, when in doubt, go ahead with adhesive bonding. So when you think that, if you think that there is, because you know, GCM link force, if I say, uh, it has got a metal primer even, a precious metal primer. So you just have to apply that precious metal primer onto the metal and then use the adhesive because it's a dual cure cement, uh, light curing through the metal, the light will not pass through. 
the thing is through the edges the light will pass through and it's also a dual cure so it will set within 3 4 minutes so so uh next i think somebody asked me what, can you give us a direct comparison of your observations on marginal leakage in cement based and resin based lootings generally in uh, resin based lootings there is not much of marginal leakage uh, marginal disintegration because wear resistance of resin looting cements are much better when compared to uh, the uh, cementations so wear resistance is much better again uh, resin modified glass enamels wear resistance is better so wherever there is resin used the wear resistance is much better so the marginal leakage is uh, minimal that has been seen even the studies if you see the marginal leak Cage when compared with uh, glass enamels and this is lesser. Like after applying, um, yes, of course you need to light cure. You know, uh, the, the, I understand this question because a lot of these veneer looting cements, uh, they say that don't light cure. You just apply a bonding agent, don't light cure it. Apply a looting, uh, aesthetic looting cement, and then place it, and then light cure. That is. Also film thickness of those bonding agents are very, when you light cure are very thick so that will cause an hampering in the placement in the fit of your veneers with g premio bond because it's got only 3 film 3 uh, microns film thickness you need to light cure the bonding agent if you are doing a veneer so it will not cause any hampering in the fit of your uh, veneers or inlays or onlays so you need to it's always better to because it's the basic if you go into the basics of composite uh, restorations you light cure your bonding agent right whenever you're giving composite restorations so why not why do you want to, why do why it is not advisable to light cure a bonding agent when you're doing a resin looting cement resin looting cement is also a type of composite itself so you need to light cure your bonding agent now again it depends upon the film thickness you have and depending upon what is the restoration you're giving is light curing must Uh, for zirconia processes yes light curing is must see again uh, uh, if it if you are doing a conventional uh, cementation with uh, zirconia the conventional cementation are generally done with conventional zirconias that is the opaque zirconias etc uh, zirconias are opaque but the thing is nowadays aesthetic zirconias are little bit of translucent so they will allow so the light curing which is required is a bit longer than the regular light curing what you do that means if your if your light cure has an intensity of 1200 uh, megawatts per centimeter square you cure it for 10 seconds so, but for zirconia you cure it for 20 to 30 seconds because you, the light has to pass through the heat has to go through it so you need to uh, light cure it for a bit longer period of time when you are uh, curing a zirconia okay. So, any more questions? So we can take up. So, what about inside the root canals for fiber pores? Uh, Suppose I'm putting a fiber pore inside the root canal. Pose. See, the for for fiber pores, self-adhesive resin cements are the best because uh, see, adhesive resin cements also work out. But the thing is. in adhesive resin cement again you need to go ahead with uh, etching bonding etc etc but self adhesive resin cement because it totally it is uh, uh, dentine structure there self adhesive yeah. resin cements have uh, uh, you know have shown a better uh, bonding inside the root canals for the pores but again the surface pre treatment of your pores is also required as per the manufacturer's uh, recommendations like for example if it's a fiber post or a glass fiber post you need to do a little bit of uh, silane application on to the fiber post and then use a uh, adhesive resin cement adhesive or self adhesive whatever uh, sure. probably we should use uh, dual cure cements so yeah, sometimes you like yeah work out well if you're using uh, adhesive Uh, self adhesive anything dual cure in inside the post you need to have a dual cure cement but the thing is i'm talking about the bonding protocol inside the cement so if you're using a self adhesive resin cement you don't need to etch and bond inside the uh, uh, post space if you're using a uh, adhesive resin cement you need to use a self etch bonding agent self etch bonding agent yes
Okay, friends, any more questions? Anyone else wants to ask directly can unmute and ask if I have missed out. You can reach out to the number which I had given on any of this, uh, if you have any further questions, I think. So I think I'm not getting any other questions yet. So yes, I guess that's about it, sir. So, yep. Thank you, sir. I, I think we will wind up. Thank you. Thank you so much for spending your mornings, Sunday morning with us, teaching us all that's these okay. uh, <coughs> confusing fundas. No, babe, that's true. So I hope uh, things got clear when to go ahead with comment and when to go ahead with bonding. So, <clears throat> right? Definitely. So, definitely. Uh, Thank you, GC, also for letting us, uh, you come over and uh, teach us all this. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank you.